Hi guys, it's Katie. Today I'm going to show you how to make kombucha. Kombucha is fermented tea, so it's just a batch of sweet tea that has been cultured with beneficial bacteria and yeast. And those are the same beneficial microorganisms that are probiotics. So really great dairy-free probiotic source and it's a whole food. So I'm going to show you how to make it. It's very simple. If you can make a batch of sweet tea and if you can get your hands on the culture, then it's incredibly easy to make kombucha. So I bet you know how to make a batch of sweet tea. I'll show you how I do it in just a second, but I want to talk about the culture. And the culture is two parts in kombucha, and you need at least one, preferably both. You need a SCOBY. I have a whole jar of extra SCOBYs. This is called a SCOBY hotel where I just store extra SCOBYs. Um, you get a new SCOBY or a thicker SCOBY every time you brew, so after a while you separate them, or if a new one forms on the surface, um, then you can just remove it and either give it to a friend or you can compost them. There's all sorts of things that people do. People feed them to their chickens, um, people dehydrate them and turn them into like jerky almost. Um, but if you don't have a SCOBY, uh, the best way to find a SCOBY is to make a friend <laughs> of somebody who already makes kombucha. So if you don't have any friends who make kombucha, make a friend who makes kombucha locally. And you can find all sorts of groups online and meetups and like Weston A. Price Foundations or just Natural Living. Or if you go into a health food store, they might be able to hook you up with somebody who can give you a SCOBY. And if you don't have anyone local to give you a SCOBY, you can get them online. Again, online groups about fermentation or natural living or traditional eating um, probably will have a bunch of people uh, who would be willing to send you one for the cost of shipping. And if you don't feel comfortable going that route, um, you can buy them on Amazon, on eBay, on Etsy, on um, you know personal blogs and things like that. All sorts of people are selling SCOBYs. And when you get a SCOBY, it usually comes with some liquid. So if you can see, in my jar. I should probably top it off with a little more, but there's some liquid in here, and all that liquid is is finished kombucha. So when you get your SCOBY, it will come in some liquid, and that's just finished kombucha. So you, that's the two parts that you need. You need the SCOBY, which is just this actual solid mass. It's a cellulose mat that the bacteria makes. There's also some dark spots on here. That's yeast strands that the yeast makes. So this is not actually the bacteria and the yeast, this is just something that the bacteria and yeast make to help them thrive. The liquid that comes with your SCOBY or that you've saved back from a previous batch, that's what is actually inoculating your batch. So if you can't get your hands on a SCOBY, but you can get your hands on a bottle of commercially made, unpasteurized, unflavored kombucha, you can let that sit out, add some sweet tea to it, and you probably will grow a SCOBY just from the liquid. So the liquid plus the SCOBY is what you preferably would have. If you have to pick one or the other, pick the liquid over the SCOBY. So I have, like I said, a whole bunch. And all you need to do once you get your culture is make a batch of sweet tea. And you can make your sweet tea however you like. If your SCOBY came with a ratio or a recipe for the amount of tea and the amount of sugar, I would recommend using that for at least the first couple of tries. And then after you get more comfortable with it, you can experiment, cut back sugar, add more sugar, try different teas. So this is how I make my sweet tea. So I use these half gallon mason jars and I just use hot, hot water out of my tap. Some people boil it. I just find that the water out of the tap is hot enough. Okay, So I'm doing two batches here. I'm going to do a batch of green tea and a batch of black tea. And it's exactly the same. You're just using black tea bags or green tea bags. There's all sorts of kinds of tea that you can use. I would recommend sticking with white tea, black tea, green tea. Things that are actually tea. You don't want anything that's a mix or things that are flavored or things that are not actually teas like herbal teas, at least to begin with. I know a lot of people experiment once they get comfortable making kombucha. Feel free to experiment in all of these steps, but I would say when you're first starting out, I would stick to the recipe that came with your SCOBY or one that you find online or follow my directions here. Now once you make a few batches of kombucha and you get a couple extra SCOBYs like this, spare SCOBYs, then feel free to experiment to your heart's content because if something goes wrong, um, if your SCOBY starts getting weak and it takes a long time for your tea to ferment, or if it molds or if something terrible happens, 
then you have a backup SCOBY. So I have my half gallon mason jars and I just fill them half full because the sugar, um, the starter liquid and the SCOBY are all going to displace some liquid so you don't want to make it too much. So we're basically making a concentrated sweet tea and then we'll add those extra things and then top off with water. So you can put the tea bags in, then sweeten it, or sweeten it, then put the tea bags in. It doesn't really matter. My ratio is a half gallon batch. I use two thirds cup of sugar. And you can use regular white granulated sugar. That's what a lot of people have really good luck with. You can use organic evaporated cane um, juice if that's what you want to use. Um, using something like honey or agave nectar or some sort of alternative sweetener generally doesn't give you as good of results but like I said if you want to experiment with that once you get a few batches under your belt feel free. So I'm just using regular white granulated sugar and I'll just stir that to dissolve the sugar. Once the sugar is dissolved then I'm just going to add my tea bags. So for my half gallon batches I use four tea bags and I use this brand for black tea. I got this really good price on Amazon. So four of those. And for the green tea, I use this brand. Also very inexpensive, high quality. I like it a lot. So we'll get four of those out. And I'm just going to plunk them down into the hot water. Okay, and I'm going to let these steep for several minutes. It's pretty warm to the touch and you want to make sure your tea is perfectly cooled down to room temperature because just like baking bread with yeast and making yogurt with uh, yogurt cultures, you're going to kill your culture. Your bacteria and your yeast are going to die if you put them in too hot of an environment. So I'm going to let these steep until they come to room temperature and that's going to make quite strong brew. Um, the green tea sometimes I will pull out a little bit sooner just because it's more likely to go bitter when it's strong. But for the black tea, I usually let it cool all the way down to room temperature and it will make quite a strong brew. Um, but again, we're going to top this off so it will dilute it a little bit. And also, um, you need a strong brew because there's things in the tea that help the SCOBY thrive. Things like um, the caffeine and the tannins really help the SCOBY thrive. So they actually consume quite a bit of the tannins and that's what gives tea its bitterness. So don't, don't be afraid to make your brew nice and dark. Um, you'll see the finished kombucha will be quite a bit lighter than the tea that I brew. So I'll just let these sit here for 20 minutes or however long it takes to cool off. If you boil your water ahead of time, you know, feel free to put it in the refrigerator or just leave it overnight. But you want to make sure that your tea is cooled down to at least room temperature before you add your culture. Okay, so I'm going to set these aside while they finish cooling and I'll pull out my last week's batch. So these are my finished kombuchas and like I said you can see how much lighter it becomes. So like I said don't be afraid to brew that nice and strong. And then here on the top you can see my scoby. I want to pull this one out because I want to show you. Scobies can look all sorts of ways. And this one actually has an, looks like it has an air bubble trapped in it. Which I think I just deflated. There was an air bubble there. This is actually two Scobies that have kind of fused together. And this one also, you can see there, has quite a bit of yeasty strands. So scobies end up looking very different depending on the type of tea. You can see how this one's very dark because it's been soaking in black tea. Um, this one's kind of bumpy and lumpy because it had that air bubble. Sometimes they're perfectly smooth and white. Um, and sometimes they have more or less of this sort of jellyfish tendrils hanging off of them. But as long as there's not mold, and you're talking about the same kind of mold that you would see on bread, like fuzzy mounds of white or bluish colored mold. As long as you're not seeing mold, then your scoby is probably okay. So right here I have a batch of finished kombucha. I'm actually going to point you a little bit to the light because I want to show you how I know when my kombucha is ready 
to go into the second ferment. So let's see if you can see. But if you look closely, you might be able to see bubbles rising from the bottom. So when there's bubbles rising from the bottom, that's how I know that it's ready for me. There's other ways that you can tell if it's ready. Um, mostly by tasting it and smelling it. And when you're doing your first couple of batches, you're going to want to look at it, smell it, and taste it every day to see how it's changing. And it can be fermented a few days and have a very strong tea flavor and a very sweet flavor and you can drink it then if you want or you can let it go more days and catch it kind of in that sweet and sour phase or you can let it ferment even longer and it will at some point become as strong and sour as vinegar and most people don't let it go that long at least not on purpose um, but anywhere in that range you can stop it and you can flavor it or you can drink it unflavored you can bottle it up to make it fizzy and effervescent um, I'm usually I'm usually on the farther end <laughs> the more sour end when I first started I was on the sweeter end so as you become accustomed to it your taste may change depending on the kind of tea it may change and depending on what you're gonna flavor it with it might change so the first thing I need to do is I need to reserve some of this liquid before I flavor it before I you know allot it to being drinking kombucha I need to save some liquid back so that I can inoculate my next batch so you do that first so you don't forget and what I'm gonna do actually is I'll go ahead and stir this because um, down here on the bottom you'll see sort of a sediment that's usually yeast that settled down there and you just want to stir it up to make everything homogenous You'll see stirring it up makes it fizz, just like soda pop. So I'll let that settle down a little bit. Another reason I like to stir it is because I do like to knock some of that dissolved carbonation out. Because when I go to sweeten this and add sugar for my second ferment, if I don't, then it can fizz up and over. So Stir that up to make it homogenous. And then I'm going to save back a cup. If you're brewing your kombucha and you're drinking it when it's more sweet, you might want to save back more because the stronger, the more sour it is, that means there's more um, bacteria and yeast in the brew. So if you're catching it before it actually ferments very long, you'll need more of it to get the amount of inoculation that you'll need. So that's a cup of that black tea kombucha saved back for that batch. And now there's a couple things you can do you can just drink this as it is. You can bottle it up and make it fizzy and you can also flavor it. So I usually flavor it and bottle it up. Okay. So these are the bottles that I use. They're called swing top or bale top bottles. These are old Grolsch beer bottles. So you can just buy Grolsch beer and either drink the beer or give it to somebody who can drink it and save the bottles. You can also just buy these swing top bottles um, or there's Certain times at Aldi, they'll have certain soda pops that come in bottles like that. So just keep your eye out for this kind of bottle. Um, you can also use other kinds of bottles, glass bottles, that you may have bought commercial kombucha in. But I find these are a little bit easier to work with. So um, for a half gallon batch, once you remove a cup, it usually works out to be exactly three of these Grolsch bottles. So that's convenient. So a lot of the sugar that I put into this when I brewed this tea has been consumed by the bacteria and caused the kombucha to turn from tea to kombucha. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some more sugar so there's some more sugar for it to eat when it's in the bottle so that it can make more carbonation and become fizzy like soda pop. So if you've ever bottled beer or you know homebrew beer this is the same thing as adding a priming sugar to your bottles. I add a measured amount of sugar to pretty much all of my batches of kombucha. So I have it on a scale here, and you can experiment with this, but 20 grams is what I put in my half gallon batch. After I remove my one cup of starter liquid, just go ahead and add 20 grams of more of that granulated sugar, 
and you can see how it's fizzing up just from the sugar going in, so stirring it down was a good idea. Okay, so that's 20 grams in. And just stir that to dissolve that in. And then from here you can add your flavorings. You can add fruit, fruit juice, um, you can add things like mint, ginger, cinnamon, uh, there's all sorts of things that you can add to it. If you're going to use fruit juice or dried fruits, it would be better if it's something that you made yourself. So you made the juice so by either um, pureeing fruit and straining it, or if you have a juicer. I wouldn't use any commercially available juices that are pasteurized or um, that have any preservatives in them. Same thing with dried fruit. Unless you find something that's just fruit that's been dehydrated, anything that has any preservatives or color retention enhancers or anything like that, I wouldn't add. So just something that's just fruit would be what I would suggest. But frozen fruit a lot of times is just fruit, so that's what I use a lot of times. So you can add your flavorings to the whole batch and then decant into your bottles, or you can add flavors to individual bottles and decant your unflavored kombucha into your bottles. So if I'm using a fruit juice or a fruit puree, I'll usually add it to the whole thing and then put it into the bottles. But more often than not, I'm using whole fruit. So I have some frozen blueberries. Um, generally, I'll put about a half a cup of fruit juice if I'm doing a whole batch or if I'm doing individually into the bottles. I usually do about 20, 30, or 40 grams of fruit, depending on how strong I want to make it. So I'm just going to put some little blueberries in here. And these are still frozen. You can thaw them out. You can use fresh. I got these little wild blueberries. They're nice and small, so they're easy to get in and out of the bottle. All right, so now I have my blueberries in the bottles. So I'm just going to use a funnel, give my finished kombucha one stir, and pour it in. Right. So I fill mine well up into the neck. I have my three bottles of blueberry black tea kombucha, and I just need to latch down the lids and leave this on the counter to ferment. Now, like I said, we added more sugar and the sugar from the fruit, so the bacteria that's in the finished kombucha um, will eat that sugar and produce carbon dioxide. That carbon dioxide is being trapped by the lid and it's going to carbonate, just like soda pop or beer. So you wanna leave it on the counter to give that bacteria a chance to do that. And that could take three, four days, depending on how warm it is in your house. So what you want to do is after a day or two, you want to burp it. And burping it just means that you hold the lid down and you very carefully open it like that and see if you hear a hiss of some gas escaping. And if you do, and it's just a little bit, then latch it back and leave it for another couple days. You want to hear a nice strong hiss, the same as it when you're opening a bottle of soda pop. That way you know that there's actual um, carbonation building up. Once you get a nice strong hiss, then you want to put everything in the refrigerator and let it chill down before you drink it. So these are going to go on the counter. I leave them right with my um, other brew that's fermenting and I'll check on it in a few days to show you what these look like. Right, so for the green tea, you're going to do the same thing. So I will take out the SCOBY and you can see how this one's a lot whiter on the surface because it's a lighter tea. So take out the SCOBY and give it a stir. Pour out about a cup to reserve for your next batch. I'll set that aside. I'm going to add 20 grams of sugar, slowly. And then I'll show you a different way of flavoring it. What I have here 
This is actually blueberries and raspberries that I pureed, strained, and froze into ice cubes. And when I poured it into the ice cube mold, I measured it. And each one of these cubes is about 25 grams of pureed fruit. So I'm going to put three or four of those in. Put four in. And now we just need to uh, let those melt. But that will flavor the whole batch, and then I can just decant it into my bottles instead of individually, uh, you know, adding fruit to each bottle. Okay, so the ice cubes have all melted. So now I just need to fill my bottles. Now these are mostly cool. I did pull the green tea tea bags out, but the black tea I'll pull out now. So at this point, this is just sweet tea. So I'm going to go ahead and add my starter liquid and the SCOBY. And if the SCOBY sinks, it's fine. If it floats, it's fine. If it hangs out in the middle, that's fine too. We'll do the same thing over here with the green tea. In. And from here, I'm just going to top them off with some cool water to make a full half gallon. Okay, and these need to be covered with a breathable cover. So I use cloth napkins or just a scrap of fabric. Some people use coffee filters. I would not use a paper towel because some of the liquid might get on the paper towel and then once the paper towel gets wet, it's not very strong. And you need to have a nice, secure, but breathable cover. As this ferments, it will attract flies and fruit flies and things like that. So even if you don't normally have flies in your kitchen, they may uh, seek out your kombucha. So here's my scobies kind of floating halfway down. That's fine. And this one, it's floating right there on the surface. So I'll go ahead and leave these on my counter. And we'll check on them in a couple days, and I'll show you what they look like. Okay, so it's been, it's been almost three days, not quite three full days, but I'll give you a look at the kombucha. Um, it's been really warm in my kitchen, even with my air conditioning running, uh, we're getting close to 100 degree temperature. So there's, um, it's a quite quick to ferment when it's warm. So this is already cloudy. I don't know if you're going to be able to see the bubbles, but bubbles are rising. And this one is pretty clear of floaters. I'll give you a look at the Scoby, just to show you that, you know, sometimes they look pretty gnarly, but like I said, as long as there's not furry little mounds of white, um, fuzzy mold, then you should be good. And then I'll show you the green tea. Um, Scoby looks really nice and smooth. I see an air, air pockets being trapped there, but again, that's fine. You might be able to see a little bit better on the lighter tea, but there's little globs of um, yeast strands and all sorts of stuff floating, but that's perfectly normal sediment on the bottom. Let's see if you can catch any bubbles rising. Yeah, I think I can see bubbles rising in the viewfinder. And then those, um, you can taste them or smell them. It smells a little bit like vinegar. I'm not quite ready to bottle these, so I'll let them go a little bit longer, but like I said, if it's your first couple of times and you might like it a little sweeter, you want to taste it frequently so you can catch it at the point where you like it. And then I'll show you burping these bottles um, where you can we'll see if we can hear the, the hiss of the gas escaping. So you want to always press down and you want to very open this in a very controlled manner because if there's a lot of pressure, it will blow this off and shoot up. So if that's going to happen, you can usually tell. So you hear that hiss, but it's not coming up, well it's going to start to come up slowly. It's fizzing, um, but it's not anything too violent. We'll try this one. This is the one that had the whole fruit in it. See if you can hear. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> See that one is nice and fizzy. Alright, so
So this is ready to go in the fridge. And once it chills down, it shouldn't be that explosive. Um, it's just pretty warm in my house right now. So we'll put that in the fridge, let it cool down for at least 24 hours, and then we can drink it. This one that just fizzed a little bit will let go another day or two. All right, so this finished kombucha has been in the fridge for at least 24 hours, and I'm going to open it. I got this little strainer. It's very convenient. Um, it not only catches the fruit, but it also catches little yeast strands, and sometimes little mini scobies will form on the surface here. And, you know, it's not going to hurt you to drink those things, but if you want to strain them out, this is a really uh, convenient strainer. So, like I said, you got to put your hand down. See if we can open this a little more controlled way than yesterday. There we go. That's super fizzy carbonated blueberry kombucha. And so from here, all we have to do is wait for the brew that I made to finish fermenting, and then we'll do the same thing. Flavor it, bottle it, make a new batch. Hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments down below. I'll try to answer your questions. Thanks so much for watching. Bye!